In this video, we're going to talk about making responsive design work for you rather than against you. Okay, let's get started here. So, I've been working on a project that's been uh, a little challenging to say the least. And uh, really what I'm trying to accomplish here with this particular Adobe Captivate project is I'm creating a self-paced e-learning course that sort of mimics like an e-book reader in, in the sense that, you know, I quite expect that the users of this course could literally be taking it on iPads, smartphones, um, you know, small uh, notebook computers, and, and so on. So, um, you know, I'm trying to make it as interesting in appearance as possible, but one of the challenges, of course, is working with uh, responsive design when it comes to, um, you know, images and placement of objects on, tech, uh, on screen as well. So, um, you know, one of the things that, uh, uh, that I've been working with is placing uh, images on the slides. So, I'm going to take you through that and show you how you can actually uh, get responsive design to do things for you that you may not have thought of otherwise. So I'm going to go into the library. This one has um, an image associated with it, this slide here, um, because there's a reference to retirement. I decided to include an image of a senior who's relatively young, certainly young at heart, and she's taking photographs. So she might be retired, but she's keeping busy. So that's always a good sign. Now, this image, of course, will need to change its size as we go across the different breakpoints. So let's start off by choosing sort of a default position for it. I'm just going to sort of roughly place it on the uh, slide where I want it as far as height is concerned, we'll say 50% from the top. And uh, just want to draw your attention to something. And this is something that I didn't notice right away. And it's not like uh, the folks at Adobe have, you know, made a big uh, emphasis on this. But of course, when you look at your uh, different breakpoints, you'll see that they are color coded. The desktop is purple. The a custom tablet or landscape tablet, if you will, is sort of a light blue. And then we have sort of this greenish yellow. There's a orange for the um, sort of a pinky, peachy orange. And then, of course, pink for a smartphone there. And they are actually associated with the outlines that you'll see on the actual position tab. Really working with the position tab is incredibly important. First thing I'm going to do here is I've reserved about 80% of my screen uh, for width of objects like text and images and stuff like that. And I've reserved 10% um, on either side for the back and next controls. I want them to be completely isolated. You know, I'm just imagining someone with a tablet using two thumbs on either side. And, you know, I, I think of that kind of stuff. So uh, first thing I'm going to do is going to center this image. And I'm going to make it about 78 wide, leaving the auto height, of course. I don't want to mess with that. And in this case here, um, that looks pretty good. We just kind of see her with her uh, um, camera there. And uh, we're just going to take a look at some of the other breakpoints to see where she lines up to. That looks fine. Well, that's going to need to be a bit lower, but let's do something that I think is probably your best tool when it comes to working with responsive design. And I'm just going to do a preview of the next five slides. And uh, I'll show you what I've been doing and how it's helped me. So this has brought up um, a preview here. And, you know, that looks fine. That looks, uh, in fact, it could be a little bit lower. Um, yeah, we're going to have to lower that just a little bit there. So let's make this 52 just to bring it down a bit here. We'll preview next five slides. So that looks better. 
And I don't mess with the breakpoints themselves. I want to see eternal or infinite breakpoints, if you will. So what I use is the, uh, the slider here. So I'm just going to take this across and look for those moments where the text is going to interfere, uh, like there. That's, yeah, so on my second breakpoint, I'm going to need to adjust that. So let's move there, uh, clearly. So let's just, uh, let's lower this. Somewhere around there. Now, the problem is we're kind of cutting her off here. So maybe what I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce the width. I haven't had to do this so far just to get her to still appear on the screen there. Let's try that. And uh, we'll go back here and we'll do a preview next five slides again. Again, I want to start at the widest and work my way down and see how that looks. So I just kind of go back and forth. You know, the course is basically done. I just want to experiment with, you know, the, the user look and feel and how this will be. I'm a little concerned what's going to happen next here. Yeah, see, that's not going to be any good. So on my third breakpoint, I have to decide what I'm going to do. Um, well, here's an interesting thing that I could consider doing on the third breakpoint. Uh, rather than having her be 62% from the top, maybe it's worthwhile making this 3% from the bottom, let's say. And we'll just uh, lower that till we get to about 3% there. So again, you'll notice that what I've got here, I've got all of these are still color-coded, so I can see which breakpoint is responsible for any of the changes in any of the settings. And that's a useful tip right there. As you're working with your responsive design projects, pay attention to what the position is. So let's just try this again. We'll see what we're coming up with here. Next five slides. This is a particularly challenging one. It's the subject in the photograph it is obviously kind of important. Um, we don't just want to see the top of her head and a brick wall. Yeah, see, so we have some problems there. It's not going to work out like we'd thought. Let's just keep going across here and see what happens. To be honest with you, I think the best decision, and sometimes this is the only decision that's open to you, is, you know, when you get to a break point where the text spills over to, um, to the image so much, maybe it's time to move the image off the screen. And we'll do that. Uh, for the lower breakpoints. So let's just do a preview of that and see what that looks like. You know, this is the thing about responsive design work is that it does require a little bit of finesse and you're going to have to spend some time playing with the settings. So you can see there I've just dropped it off completely and obviously on a smartphone it's more important that the text be visible for the students to read. So I think we're going to go with that. Let's do one more here. So I originally placed this in the bottom right, but I don't particularly care for that. And I'll just find it in the library here. And we'll just, there it is. Dish of food. So uh, again we're talking about, I'm pretty certain that Katie is going to have cooked dinner for us. So that's why I did this example of a dinner. So we'll go to the position and the first thing we need to do, again remember that space reserved for the text and images is about 80% of the center of this particular slide. So well, all of them actually. And I'm just going to set this at 78%. So I have a lot more room to work with here. I've only had a couple bullet points there and uh, yeah, I think this uh, this will work pretty good. We're going to align the uh, on the on the we're going to align center horizontally on the slide, and we'll just see how this works. Again, we'll just do preview next five slides, and then play across with the responsive design slider and see exactly what the results are like here. So, let's take a look at that. Looks good. Looks good. Looks good. Uh oh. Oh. 
There we go. So on my third break point, I'm going to need to lower this image of the food. So let's stick with that there. Incidentally, I've also discovered, you know, with your text boxes, you're going to want to give lots of space for them to grow and shrink. So I've rolled that down just a little bit there. So on the third break point, let's bring this down to 40% from the top and see what that does. So let's just again start at the, the, the first break point and next five slides. We'll see what this looks like here. This really is my workflow for, for working with images and text for responsive design. Um, this is a pretty basic, simple course here, but yeah, there we go. I think we're good. We're good. So far, so... Uh-oh. So, yeah, let's bring this down to, on the third break point, maybe 45, but let's try 50. I know it would be ideal to have it up a little higher, but, you know, that's the thing about responsive design. Sometimes you're going to have to make some compromises there, so... Let's just jump straight to the third break point and see what that looks like. So we've got the food at the bottom there. Looks good, looks good. This brings us all the way to that there. That looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. So that, yeah, it spills over at the bottom here, but I rather, you know, when you see images like this, um, you know, I'd rather have the width line up properly than worry about it spilling down into the ether below. Um, so that looks pretty good. So again, that's uh, very simple, straightforward. Just remember a couple things that you can also uh, do some interesting stuff as well where you have uh, things change up. Like in this particular slide, I have the image at the bottom. And from here, he starts off, um, you know, at the top. And at one point, I literally have him change to the bottom. So let me show you what this looks like. Um, in this case here, this image uh, starts off uh, a certain distance from the top, but then I change it halfway through to be a certain distance from the bottom. And you'll see the effect that that has. So again, it's staying relatively in line with the back and next buttons. But now it's tied to the bottom and it's always going to shrink down as we get smaller and smaller. And you just want to make sure you're not interfering with the text because while images are very important, the text obviously is where the content is. Guys, if you like the videos that I'm producing for you, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel and if you thought this video was useful, interesting, fun, educational, go ahead and give me a thumbs up.